Good afternoon. Welcome to this afternoon's Mass. Benvenuti questa messa, se siete italiani. Um, we gather today to celebrate the feast of a great saint, well known to so many of us, Saint Francis of Assisi. We um, pray for his intercession that the radical spirituality she, he introduced, or God introduced through him, that fire, that fire of God's love may burn in our hearts, as he did burn in the hearts of the three shepherds of Fatima, whose vision and whose answer to God's call has brought us here. We pray in today's Mass as requested by some of us for their families, for um, was asking for the, the God's direction for the son and for their country, the Soto, um, as they mark the anniversary and the elections, and this prayer for healing also of the sick. And is Diane Coates' um, birthday mass as well. Shall we begin our celebration in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit? Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries worthily. We will humbly now acknowledge our sinfulness and ask the good Lord for his forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, by whose gift St. Francis was conformed to Christ in poverty and humility, grant that by walking in Francis' footsteps, we may follow your Son and through joyful charity come to be united with you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. You must have heard of my career as a practicing Jew how merciless I was in persecuting the Church of God, how much damage I did to it, how I stood out amongst other Jews of my generation, and how enthusiastic I was for the traditions of my ancestors. Then God, who had specially chosen me while I was still in my mother's womb, called me through his grace and chose to reveal his son in me so that I might preach the good news about him to the pagans. I did not stop to discuss this with any human being, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to see those who were already apostles before me. But I went off to Arabia at once and later went straight back from there to Damascus. Even when after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to visit Cephas and stayed with him for 15 days, I did not see any of the other apostles. I only saw James, the brother of the Lord. And I swear before God that what I have just written is the literal truth. After that, I went to Syria and Sicilia and was still not known by sight to the churches of Christ in Judea, who had heard nothing except 
that their one-time persecutor was now preaching the faith he had previously tried to destroy. And they gave glory to God for me. The word of the Lord. Lead me, O Lord, in the path of life eternal. O Lord, you search me and you know me. You know my resting and my rising. You discern my purpose from afar. You mark when I walk or lie down. All my ways lie open to you. Lead me, O Lord, in the path of life eternal. For it was you who created my being, knit me together in my mother's womb. I thank you for the wonder of my being, for the wonders of all your creation. Lead me, O Lord, in the path of life eternal. Already you knew my soul. My body held no secret from you. When I was being fashioned in secret and moulded in the depths of the earth, lead me, O Lord, in the path of life eternal. I call you friends, says the Lord, because I have made known to you everything I have learned from my Father. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus came to a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. She had a sister called Mary, who sat down at the Lord's feet and listened to him speaking. Now Martha, who was distracted with all the serving, said, Lord, do you not care that my sister is leaving me to do all the serving by myself? Please tell her to help me. But the Lord answered, Martha, Martha, he said, you worry and fret about so many things, and yet few are needed. Indeed, only one. It is Mary who has chosen the better part. It is not to be taken from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Mary has chosen the better path, and it is not to be taken from her. Um, to those who are just arriving for this pilgrimage, for their pilgrimage here, I say welcome. To those of us from the UK who are about to go, who are returning early tomorrow morning, it is farewell to this beautiful, holy place, a place that... Um, as a special place in our hearts. As I said at the Mass celebrated a few days ago, a place where heaven touched earth, where the heavens united with the earth, a place with special significance. And we should not let the significance and the power of this environment be lost on us. And it is easy for that to happen. We can get so distracted like Martha. Martha, Martha, you are anxious and you are worried about so many things, when actually only a few matter, indeed only once. We should be grateful to God and to Our Lady for the opportunity of stepping away from those distractions out there in the world 
all those things that draw our attention. And I hope that while we are here, we've not allowed those things to keep pulling us away from what God and what Our Lady are giving us in this environment. Because when we come here, we are expected, or it is expected that we step out, step out of our mundane worries and anxieties and preoccupations and focus on that one thing that really, truly matters. Focus on the eternal, eternal reality. Focus on God, just like Mary did, sat at the feet of Jesus. Every other thing was useless as far as compared to this eternal value that was before him, before her, the presence of God. I hope we've been able to do that these few days, or for those who are just arriving, that you will be able to do that, to focus on what matters, to focus on what matters. St. John of the Cross will always say, it does not matter whether a bird is tied with a big chain or with a tiny string. What matters is that it is kept from flying. It does not matter whether a, a, a bird is tied with a heavy chain or a tiny string. What matters is that it is kept from flying. It doesn't matter what the devil uses to distract you and I from flying to God, from drawing close to God. What matters is that we do not reach God's presence as Mary did in today's reading. So let us be asking for the grace while we are here to be able to completely switch off from everything else and focus on what matters. Then we'll be able to hear the call being made of us, that call that our Blessed Mother made to three innocent little children that has gathered millions in this holy place. These were three unassuming little kids. They didn't know that this place would be transformed. They didn't know that you and I would be here. They were just ordinary kids for whom a great demand was made and a great responsibility was placed on their shoulders. I hope we are aware of that as we walk these grounds that that call is still going on, or what Thomas Merton will call the seats of contemplation. The seats of contemplation drop around us each day. And what are we picking from the seats that God drops around us as we walk around these hallowed grounds? What do we do with them? The image that came to me today, this just before mass, was the image of the sower. When Jesus talks about the sower that goes out sowing, says some seeds fall on the, fell on the path of the road and bursts of the air ate them up. Some fell in between thorns and were choked up. Some fell on rocky grounds, tried to germinate and were scorched to death by the sun. What is happening to the seeds that the Lord is sowing in your heart? Are you responsive at all? Are you that holy soil, that fertile soil that will bear fruit. I don't know what seeds have been dropped for you while you are here or will be dropped while you are here. Whether it is the people moving around you or those you see on their knees making this procession in penance, what is the Lord saying to you while you are here? Or is it the story of the little children, the contemplation of France, a little Francisco, who had became a contemplative at that tender age, even before he was 11. And you look at you and I, we've not even grown to the point of giving an hour a day in contemplation to the Lord. Is it the penance, the life of penitence of little Jacinta, who does not know what we call sin, but chose to do penance for the sins of the world and took it to such a radical step tying herself with cords, fasting at that tender age. She learned to give up everything for the sake of the call. Isn't it amazing that St. Lucy, call, I call her saint already, that Sister Lucy called her last book, The Calls. 
she might mean something else, but it has specific, particular resonance, particular effect for each and every one of us. The calls from heaven, the calls that God made, is any of them touching you while you're here? Or has this place become a place of tourist attraction, that we come for tourism? Are you touched by the calls of Our Lady? She made two principal calls here. One was for prayer, and the other one was for penance. Which one are you answering as you are living here, or you just came? You just came for the sake of coming. You think that journey all the way from heaven down here was for nothing, to allow you to have fun, to give you opportunity to have a trip, to come and celebrate, and have a good holiday. That's why Our Lady come all the way from, came all the way from heaven. She made two calls, prayer and penance, which Louis de Montfort names as one of the five um, um, necessary ingredients of holiness that you cannot do without. See the quanon when it comes to holiness. She says number one is humility of heart. You must be humble. Number two is continual prayer, which is what Our Lady calls for. And I'm so glad of the response she has gotten in this holy place, that every minute, every time prayers are going on here in this sanctuary, rosary, masses, people are making processions and penance. That's what she asks for, continual prayer. The number three is mortification in all things. Mortification. And that's what she asks for, penance. And Louis de Montfort asked two more, conformity to the will of God and abandonment to divine providence. He said, without these five, you cannot be a saint. So the two cause, principal cause our blessed mother make, made fell within these five. So my, my concern is as I leave this place, what is my response? Where has the word of God fallen on me? Will it be like the one that has fallen under, choked up, by, choked up by thorns, or fallen on hard rock. Hard rock, impenetrable rock. Is my, heart, is my heart ready for God's word to bear fruit as I depart from this um, holy place? That's the question um, you and I should be answering as we, as we live from this place. And we have example of these little children who answered, no matter what it cost them, they were not ready to relent. They were even thrown to prison. They suffered humiliation. People cajoled them. They stuck to their guns. We celebrate another great hero today, St. Francis of Assisi, who did the same. Once he heard that call, he did not look back. Francis surprised everyone. Once he had that call, he built my church. Francis sold everything he had, including his father's property. And when his father protested, he removed his clothes and gave to his father. If you want me to give you back money I gave for the rebuilding of the church, here, Dad, have my clothes as well. And have your inheritance. I don't want it anymore. From today, you want me to renounce my inheritance. I have no father anymore. I have only one father in heaven. So he renounced family. He renounced everything and went naked. When his father searched for him, this man was hid, hid, hid in the cave for one month. No food. When he came out, he was like a skeleton, all because he wanted to answer God radically. After that, he refused to have any possession. He was like a madman. People mistook him for a madman because he wore tattered clothes. Today he celebrated. Haven't we sanitized, sanitized him and cleaned him up? We see Franciscans today and we love their habit, don't we? That's not how it looked. That habit was a tattered, tattered clothes collected by Francis just to cover his nakedness and with a cord to tie it, hold it together. He was, looked like he looked like a beggar. That's what he looked like for the sake of Christ. And today we celebrate him, but we celebrate a sanitized one, a cleaned up Francis, a Francis made in our own image and our likeness, not the povero of Assisi, not the one who married Lady Poverty, who took Lady Poverty as a wife 
and renounced everything for the sake of the gospel. The question is, what are you taking home? Has the call gotten you? Are you going to answer that call as you leave? Or are you leaving as you came? Are you going back here as you came? I pray that our blessed mother will touch our hearts, each and every one of us, that we answer like these kids. Make a resolution as you leave and ask for the grace to live it to the full, no matter what it costs you. May I not live here the way I came. And may I not, may I not fail to answer that call from heaven. Amen. I do all that I ever have, I offer now to you. Take our sons. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness of this bread to offer, we earth has given us and human hands are made to become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. All that I am, all that I do, blessed are you, Lord of all creation, through your goodness and strength, through the divine work of God, has become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. and sanctify these gifts for your honor, Lord, knowing that I love and serve you is an offering world. All that I am, all that I do, all that I ever have, I offer now to you. Pray, dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May God accept the sacrifice at your hands, with the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we bring you these offerings, O Lord, we pray that we may be rightly disposed for the celebration of the mystery of the cross, which St. Francis so ardently embraced through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you are praised in the company of your saints, and in crowning their merits, you crown your own gifts. By the aware of life, you offer us an example. By communion with them, you give us companionship. By their intercession, show us support, so that encouraged by so great a cloud of witnesses, we may run as victors in the race before us, and win with them the imperishable crown of glory through Christ our Lord. And so with angels and archangels and with the great multitude of saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who say to you, apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. 
have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body and blood of Christ preserve us to everlasting life. Amen. For Holy Communion, we're told the rules are still that we receive only on the hand, not on the mouth. But la communion est regulée que nous ne recevons comme sur la boca, solo sur la sur la mano. La communion est non si recevée sur la boca, solo sur la mano. Grazie.
Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord, through these holy gifts which we have received, that imitating the charity and apostolic zeal of St. Francis, we may experience the effects of your love and spread them everywhere for the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We say one of the prayers taught by the angel to the little children. My God, I believe, I adore, I hope, and I love you. I ask pardon of you for those who do not believe, do not adore, do not hope, and do not love you. Amen. If you have any religious articles for blessing, if you raise them up now, any articles for blessing? Facciamo una benedizione per articoli religiosi, se ce l'avete. Heavenly Father, we call down your blessing on these items, sacramentals, candles, and all we've bought to help us in our spiritual journey. Bless and sanctify them, Lord. Through them, ward off every evil from around us. Make a bulwark against every power of the evil one. Lord, through them, draw us closer to you. And may there be signs of your moral presence around us and around our homes. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. May the Almighty God bless these items, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thank you for an active participation in the Mass. I'd like to thank Deacon Chris Wells, who um, has helped me out at this Mass. Um, I also recognize Fathers William and Father Martin from Ireland, who are with us in this Mass. And I'm Father Martin Onoha. I came with a group from Stockport, um, Greater Manchester in the UK, and we are leaving tomorrow morning. It's been lovely being here, and for those who are just coming, we wish you a wonderful time. We have had a wonderful time, and may our blessed mother um, remain ever with us all. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.